I don't know whether I should be happy or concerned that Hisoka is looking at the subscribe button for the New World Review like this. I mean, on the one hand, it's understandable because it does give you regular Hunt Hunter content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But then again, he is almost certainly going to try to uh, bang it. So I recommend that you all press it pretty quickly before that happens. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, a source for everything anime and manga. And today I would like to take the time to discuss one of my favorite characters in Hunt Hunter and more specifically attempt to break down why he is such a beloved presence in the series. Because if you look at everything that is Hisoka on paper, it kind of goes against, well, everything that we as a global society tend to value. And to put it plainly, he is a selfish mass murdering outsider with proudly displayed extreme intimate tendencies, a AKA weird sexual fetishes. In the real world, someone like Hisoka would be ostracized from society for so, so many different reasons. And to be fair, that is kind of reflected in Hunt Hunter because Hisoka is generally separate from the world at large. But for some reason, within the context of reading or watching a story, I find him to be endlessly fascinating and look forward to his presence far more than the large majority of the cast. And I think that this opening post from an old Reddit thread by King Theo Dem that I stumbled upon really sums up the grand question that I am asking in this video. I'm a huge fan of Hisoka and the way he leaves in his quest for the ultimate fight. He's the embodiment of what Jing was talking about in the election arc. The more unpredictable the opponent's motives, the more dangerous they become. But it occurs to me that if Hisoka happened to move into my house on my street, I'd likely call the police. Why are we so attracted to the dangerous psychopaths? And that is our dilemma. Why are we so endlessly captivated by a figure that we would never under any circumstances want in our own lives? And there's a lot of profound psychological reasoning for this, and it doesn't just go for Hisoka. He is but one example of a compelling figure like this. Another would be the character Dexter, or if we remain in keeping with the world of anime and manga, then Alucard from Helsing would be another figure that inspires that same sort of compelling presence. Or you know, actually even the entire genre of true crime, which takes real life figures and can tell some very disturbing stories that hit home pretty hard. And yet they're so damn compelling. And there's a lot of reasons for the popularity of this sort of material. One of which I'm certain you've heard before, which is the old quote of, oh man, it was like a train wreck. I just couldn't look away, which speaks to some sort of morbid fascination, which definitely applies to Hisoka. The idea that you know what's happening is not good, not good at all, which is the large majority of Hisoka's actions. But at the same time, this is something very unusual to see in life and the basic desire for experience overrides everything else. And part of that can be explained by the idea that deep down, humans can actually find some sort of evolutionary benefit from watching these situations, thinking that they can learn and be better prepared if they were to encounter said situations in their own lives. Of course, how effective this can be is very debatable and applying it to Hisoka is, uh, it's not going to work out very well because you can watch as many examples of bungee gum as you like. You'd still be pretty screwed if you ran into Hisoka in a dark alleyway or even a perfectly lit alleyway. It really wouldn't matter. But the third and final base response I think is the most profoundly engaging one, which is the simple idea of an adrenaline rush, which obviously is nowhere near say the scale of skydiving, but experiencing any form of well-portrayed danger in media does still release a bit of the old hormones and that can become quite addicting. Meaning that I believe it's honestly possible for readers or watchers of Hunter Hunter to become somewhat chemically addicted to Hisoka because he provides that sense of potential danger wherever he pops up, even if he ends up doing absolutely nothing. But we need to dive a lot deeper than that. It's very easy to say the effect that Hisoka provides, but what I'm much more interested in is how Togashi has crafted him to do so. And the first factor I'd like to examine is that of mystery. Mystery is a fascinating human phenomena that appeals to our innate curiosity. Our lustful answers is pretty unparalleled in all of existence as we know it. And Hisoka is effectively a walking question mark. He struts into the series with a bold design, twisted desires, and the power to make them a reality. Even if you are not consciously aware of it, there is a desire to know what circumstances forged a person like this. And yes, I know there is a Hisoka backstory chapter, which I will address in a bit, but focusing solely on the canon of Hunter Hunter, this has not and is unlikely to ever be revealed. And I would liken Hisoka's appeal to that of, you know, quite probably the most infamous villain of all time in media being the Joker, a character who has been featured in comic shows and films for 80 years now. And despite the fact that there have been a wide variety of origin stories published, there is still no definitive answer as to what created the Joker. And I really do think that's how the character works best with this veil of 
mystery permanently hanging over him, which you can see reflected very strongly in Hisoka. There is nothing known about his past prior to some scattered events of him in Heaven's Arena, as well as the former Hunter exam and defeating a member of the Phantom Troop, but all of that is still relatively recent history. And here is where we will bring up the fact that there was a one-shot storyboard chapter completed by Sui Ishida, mangaka of Tokyo Ghoul, with Togashi's blessing that told an origin story of Hisoka, in which he, as a child, joins a circus, discovers Nan, and I won't spoil the rest for you in case you're keen on reading it, but it's a very cool piece of media, especially when you see Hisoka use bungee gum for the quote unquote, first time. And I say quote unquote because yeah, this was made with Togashi's approval, but there has never been a statement regarding its canonicity, and I personally believe that that's how it should remain. Just like how the Joker has his various intriguing origin tales, I think this chapter serves as something of a great urban legend of how Hisoka may have come to be. But at the same time, his mystery will endure and never properly be solved, which results in a permanent sense of intrigue regarding him because this enigma will never be unlocked. And that's not the only factor that makes an audience pay that little little bit of extra attention to him because the mysterious origin is one thing, but it counts for very little if the actions of the character don't reflect that. And in Hisoka's case, the question mark created by his origin transfers over to every decision we see him make in the series, which are largely unpredictable. When Hisoka appears, you can never quite be sure what he's going to do. Even if you think you understand the character and his motivations, you still have next to zero chance of predicting how he is going to go about achieving those goals. Which means that whenever Hisoka's presence becomes apparent, you are very much rolling the dice on how this scene conflict, or even an entire arc is going to play out, because there are points where Hisoka can be a very random force of anarchy. And with that in mind, we always have to be very wary of Hisoka scenes, because he brings with him an incomparable sense of tension. Because things could work out very well, and he'll agree to like join your dodgeball team to kill some time, but things can also go very, very badly and result in grand tragedy, like an iconic character being unceremoniously murdered within seconds. And just to contrast this to explain why this factor is so important, let's take another beloved antagonist in Hunter Hunter, Crawl. He also commands a great sense of intrigue, but for very different reasons to Hisoka, because if Hisoka is the ultimate force of anarchy, then Krollo is the epitome of planned destruction. As a result though, general Krollo scenes don't tend to carry the extreme tension that Hisoka brings with him, because you know that Krollo is extraordinarily unlikely to act, unless this action is something that he has thought thoroughly about. He isn't a force of grand surprise, usually that is, and so you can almost feel at ease with Krollo until his plan goes into action. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all, but Hisoka has this more volatile volatile factor that commands us to pay close attention to him at all times because he evokes unpredictable danger. In addition to this though, the Hisoka character is also able to tap into a lot of empathy with readers and watchers of the series. And at first that probably sounds like utter madness because how could we possibly empathize with this mad magician? And it's less to do with his actions, which are by and large 100% deplorable, but more to do with what those actions represent, which is a grand sense of freedom. Hisoka is a man who is not bound by the same sort of societal conventions that we are in the real world or even the characters in the world of Hunter Hunter are. He lives life entirely for himself and to achieve his own purposes, which is something that is very, very twistedly admirable because I'm sure that we have all experienced a desire to break away from the societal standards that we are constrained into. Not to the point of murder and such, but for more simplistic things like, man, I really wished I lived in a world where I didn't have to pay rent. Or if you're a younger viewer, man, I wished I lived in a world where I didn't have to do homework or whatever it is that kids do and don't want to do. It's been a while since I've been one, but then comes along Hisoka, who represents a bit of an escape from those constraints. A kind of vicarious living, if you will, because can you imagine a situation where Hisoka is doing something like paying rent? I mean, maybe you can because he is simply that unpredictable, but Hisoka is a character who can essentially go anywhere he wants and do anything he wants. There are no restrictions on him whatsoever in this world, and that is something that most people look towards as an ideal standard of life. Now, what Hisoka does with those actions is obviously questionable at the very least, but the fact that he has the freedom to do so is also a key factor in this segment of his appeal. And also before I get any comments like, so what, everyone in Hunter Hunter can do that. No, no, they really cannot. Almost every other character in the series has some sort of hindrance that constrains them. Take Gon and Killua, for example. Their constraint is that they are not strong enough. They can't simply wander in anywhere they like because chances are they will get obliterated by some sort of opponent and as strong as they become, that feeling will never be dispelled. These two boys are at the mercy of this world. Whereas with a character like Hisoka, it's very much the other way around. There is this distinct feeling that the world is very much at his mercy because he operates on an entirely different level. For another example though, let's take Illumi, a man who undoubtedly has power equitable to Hisoka, but who has nowhere near the freedom that his clown chum has because Illumi's restriction is that he exists almost exclusively to operate the Zoldic family business. So yes, he can theoretically go anywhere in the world he wants, but his actions are mandated
dictated entirely by his family and their clients. So Ilami has all of the power in the world, but very little freedom to actually use it. So he definitely doesn't evoke anywhere near the same sort of feeling generated by Hisoka, who has this perfect balance of both, supreme power and supreme freedom. And that's obviously not all there is to it and not everything needs such a detailed explanation because there is a much more simplistic appeal to many people, which is that they enjoy Hisoka because he just has a great character design. So their indulgence of him spawns from aesthetics alone, which I can also appreciate. And it definitely helps that his fighting style meshes well with this, as Togashi made a brilliant decision to allow him to use cards to great extent. And quite frankly, there's also the fact that he is generally one good looking gent, which will always inspire admiration from a certain segment of the population, no matter how despised his actions are. That's just one of those sad but true things about life. The better looking you are, the more you can get away with. And if you're good looking enough, you could probably get away with murder, quite literally in the case of Hisoka. But then again, if that's all there was to it, then Hisoka would become a very shallow experience quite quickly as well. So it is very much a combination of everything that makes him stand out. His mysterious origins, consistently unpredictable actions, a bizarre sense of admiration for his enviable lifestyle, and all wrapped together with a brilliant design, and bam, you have a recipe to activate the core mechanisms of human fascination. Hisoka is a train wreck, a beautiful, glorious, fascinating train wreck, and it is nigh on impossible to break away from that, which is why Hisoka is, and quite probably always will be, one of the most compelling characters, not only in Hunter Hunter, but in anime and manga in general. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunter content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunt Hunter glory delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.